we'll see, yeah, if the, yeah. see if we lose power in the camera all of a sudden. <laughs> well, we have two cameras now, so between the and two, hopefully we can. Is a complete sequence from, let's say, one C to the next C, but it's comprised of seven notes, the eighth being the repeat of the first note at a higher level. So if we start here at middle C, the next note is D. That sounds right to you, right? Pete wasn't here last year. And there's E. You can hear that that sounds right. C, D, E. Now that's also going, these are sharps and flats. So here we have C flat. You can hear that doesn't sound right. That's not a whole step. That's a whole step to here. That's a whole step to here. Now, so we have Do, Re, Mi. Now your ears are going to play games on you between the third and fourth interval. And if I was to take another whole step, you're going to hear it sounds off. Do, re, mi. You hear that? That's not right. Because your ears are off, that's twisting, and what your ears are hearing. And the scale would be Do, Re, Mi, Fa. But that's only a half a step from here to here. But that's how your ears hear it, as if it's a whole step. This is why you have black keys on a piano keyboard. Yeah. What? Can you do the, the Do, Re, Mi without saying Do, Re? You know, just do it. That fourth note was actually a half an interval, but it sounds like a whole. If I was to go a whole, I ain't gonna make a song that way. You saw that, Dina? You got that down? Mm -hmm. Now, Avi's got a good explanation. <laughs> yeah, because the, no, that's not Avi's explanation, it's his pianist friend. Yeah, that was sad. Because they didn't have enough room on the, key, on the keyboard to put the keys. <laughs> I don't even want to get into that one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you catch all the that, Mom? The strings are shorter. <laughs> you see, yeah. do, you, do you hear it? You see, you see what he's Do you hear it? Yeah, I took piano. But do you see this, 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 this that's a half step? Uh, that's it's not a piano, yes. you're just pricing keys, so you don't see actually what the what it is. On a guitar like this, you can see, here's, here's your first note, this is a half a step, here's your flat, sharp and flat, here's your next step in the interval, here's a sharp and flat, this is your next step in the interval. Now by all linear progression, this here would be a half step and this would be the next step in the interval, but that's not the case, because the octave twists in your ears and you hear the between the third and fourth step a half step as a whole, and that's what creates all the black keys on your keyboard. But it's not the same as looking at the actual frequency. The, each time I touch, each time I do this, that's a frequency. That's a frequency. That's a frequency. So is this. And you can hear that's wrong. Even though it's the same distance between here and here and here and here and here and here. Now, in music, you can hear this. It's, a, it's also present in all of nature, all the laws, but you can't hear it like you can in music. This is not specific to music alone. Like your rainbow, white light, is made up of seven colors. Just like music, the octave is made up of seven notes, seven progressions. Now, if you was to analyze the frequencies of those colors to create, you'd find the same intervals in the light that you would in the sound. And everything in creation, you'd find it. Beth, can you turn this on, sir? Sure. Um, so it's, it's, it's not, music just gives us a glimpse 
into the underlining reality. But this is true with all of nature, all the laws of nature. It's not just sound. It's everything. Also your thoughts, as they build up, they're subject to the same natural law. And if Beth turns the TV on, Sure. What about brainwaves? What? Brainwaves. Brainwaves? I would say that everything, everything is subject to that law. Everything. Yeah. But how are you going to track brainwaves? Don't know. It's don't a little more difficult. Radio. It's not like something like that where you can see it and you can hear it. Positive and negative electrons, how do you track that? Right. Yeah, but it's there. And what creates a difference between positive and negative electrons? You have the same dynamic forces of positive and negative that permeates all of creation. Everything is positive and negative. negative. That's why I said, for those who want to have homosexual marriages, and all, let's wire their universities same sex. What would happen if you wired the plugs positive to positive and negative to negative? Nothing would work because it has to be positive to negative. Mm -hmm. So I'm all for, let's show them how, let's get rid of these homophobe universities. Try. Why, <laughs> why are them same, why are those circuits same sex? So they should, they should live out the principles yes, uh, in, yes. in every aspect yes. of their institution, including yes. the wire. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think it does. Yeah, don't be it. Right? So why was the first homosexual allowed? What about allowed? What's going to stop them? You do what you want. You have free will. Yeah. That's the part that allowed the homosexual. Well, what's will. stopping you from free having free will? Yourself. Well, no. There's nothing stopping you from exercising your free will. Except you'll inherit what comes around later, you inherit the result of your actions. But since the church threw out cause and effect, that's like a mental block in it. Like when supposedly Jesus healed the woman who was caught in adultery, and he said, go and sin no more, lest, unless, lest a worse thing happen to you, which means our actions follow. Yeah, saying that you response. have saying they have free will isn't the same thing as saying there are no consequences. Well, that's the Jesus God. Say your prayer to the Jesus God, and it doesn't matter what you do, you say it, you're done. So in that in that sense, uh, the 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 you know the evangelical church created the homosexual movements and so on. They create this whole culture. Because why not? I mean, if if you can just say a prayer and every all sins are forgiven, why why pick certain sins that are still not okay? But I think there must be some higher reason, some higher cause to homosexuality. It's not like it's uh, just a part of our. You know, you've culture, probably, it's, probably, it's existed for a long time. Probably points in the mind lend towards that. Exclusions, when one part of the mind is active and, and the rest is wiped out in the tree of life. And that makes it prone, but that doesn't mean you can't expand that. Doesn't mean you have to act on it. No, you can't change it. No, right. but just to say, I mean, homosexuality has been with also, mankind from... Yes, Way that's back. part it's, of the part of the. Yeah, I mean, part of man, there's, it's not there's, when we grew up, culture. there was kids we knew were gay yeah, just from the get-go, exactly. almost. Yeah, you know, when we were it's younger, young, like, we just knew. Just, well, the question is, why were you born gay? Yeah, like exactly. the man, why were you born blind? Because I mean, you eat old grains. Why were you born this way? Why were you born that way? But because they took out the that there's a there's a cause. Everything is mindless and has no answers to anything. I'm homosexual because God made me that way. God didn't make you that way. Your previous actions made you that way. God made the laws that made No, that's made the laws you. that came into creation. But God made the laws which um, caused the 
the laws Previous came into effect. Do. The laws came into effect at creation. God rested on the seventh day; His work was done. Period. That's the end of so God. So that's the extent of His involvement. That's why the name. That's the right. Laws. Because the, He left. That's what the I'm laws saying. were there, and the law. It's the job now of the laws to bring all of creation from the Alpha to the Omega. Now, it's doing this by returning to each person the fruit of their own actions. And is done through the law of octaves. When, let me see if I got here. Uh, all right. So at the point of the twisting, if you could. Um, Here's a picture of your keyboard. If you could perceive your previous action together with the current choice, would, would that straighten you up? This is why you should always take responsibility for everything that you encounter in life. You're half responsible for your problems with Avi. And you caused half of the problems. Mm -hmm. So if you blame him, then you just continue on this loop, karmic loop. Let it go. Say, pray for guidance. You're at fault. And see what happens. On the keyboard, since you took keyboard lessons, of course, here's your, we see no sharp and flat between E and F. And B and C because that's in C. Was it C major? The keyboard is in. Yeah. Um, now there is no sharp and flat between those notes, and this is because of the way your ears hear the frequencies. It's not that there is one missing, a key missing, like Avi's musician friend tried. It does not exist. <laughs> Now, it's easier to see on the guitar where I could go and you can see the intervals. Yeah, I had some, some Cub Scouts. We built, a, we built a musical instrument, and that's one of the things we were showing us where they could, as, as the pipe links, basically they would, they would beat on a pipe to make a certain note, and then the, the pipe links, was, we reached that point where was, one of them's like a whole step and the other's just like a half, and it still you know, has that note progression just like they show on the guitar. Mm. Here we have the enneagram. I'm not an expert in enneagram, but we see this food and one here where he's going do, re, me. Now, in Gurdjieff's and Pythagoras's mathematics of reckoning, the empty, what comes in between the third and fourth point is another, the start of another octave, and that straightens it out at this lower point. So we see the Do, Re, Mi, and that he's got an air octave. Now what Gurdjieff says, what he says is, man, average people will never understand this one here, which he's got impressions. And if you want to straighten out and go rise up the tree of life, then it's these impressions that matter. Of course, the right food and the right breath and the right air is also important, but these impressions is the one that Gurdjieff said, they'll never guess what it is. And what it is, it's because the male generates male impressions. The female generates female impressions. And unless they intermingle, you will never get that last part of the, and straighten out the octave the dynamics of creation. Just like if you have a jar of sperm and a jar of ovum, you'll never get a child offspring, a third force, unless they somehow mix together. Well, they not only got to mix together here, but they have to evolve together. Um, I don't know whether I have it on this web page, but I have a picture of which is really good. There's the enneagram there again. Um, this web page I'm going through, by the way, is called the Law of Octaves. This one here is what I'm doing, presently working on here. This is the one that Beth likes. Where are you, Beth? I'm here, I love that one. So here we have the male and the female, but the third force balance is not here at the same horizontal level. It's raised up into something totally different than the, greater than the original two. 
And that's what the impressions does. It's the impressions, the mixing of the impressions in a higher order that in a, in a proper consecrated union that creates this greater and allows them to enter into a higher plane, as in the triangle. If we look at the, do I have a star of David on this page? Alan, is it possible to um, magnify a bit? Because like, I know I'm sitting probably pretty far away, but I'm not really able to yes, it is, if I see much. Probably it is. Which page is that on? It's called knowthyself.nazarene.org. Thanks. You got a mouse wheel on that thing? A what? A mouse wheel. You got a mouse wheel? Why? Hold down the control key, move the, the wheel. You can zoom in if you want. No, I can. Uh, I'm looking for, I guess I don't have it on this page, but it's easy to find. I got them all over the place. That's the one I had yesterday. What page was I on yesterday? Um, what about control F? You can search it. Well, I can also. Um, anyway. The Star of David over the Tree of Light. You have the two points that are on the same horizontal plane. So the organic third force balance would be on the same horizontal plane. But it's the raising up, which is done with the impressions between the proper mixture of male and female. Now, if you want the dynamics of a marriage and this interaction of the two, um, we can give you that also. Um, let me open. Uh, let me just go in where I know what it is. Which is this one here. Is that big enough? All right, so there we have the tree of life in the background. We have the feminine column here on the left. We have the male column on the right. We have the kingdom up here, which is pos positive in relation to the earthly kingdom down here. And here we have the horizontal interaction of male and female. Yeah. What? Point to the columns because you're going through the thing. Don't you see I, my? I can see them, but other people have it. So. All right, so. Okay, the female column just, you know, just go down. Down yeah. on this side. That would be the tree of there, life right here behind that. See the tree of the tree, tree of life column right there? That's feminine. Right it's, there, yeah. All right, this one here is the positive polarity. See that one? Everybody. It's the left side. Now, <laughs> just carnal interaction between male and female would place the third force balance somewhere in, on this line. What Gurdjieff was talking about there in the building up and completing the center of the column was the impressions that have to evolve each other and mingle and bring this third, this here, and this of course a mist uh, or someone like Pythagoras or Gurdjieff or whatnot that's an actual mathematician would understand that the laws here are the same. This is a measurement of a law here, this angle. This is a measurement of a law here. They're reversed and opposite and equal. And unless they're reversed and opposite and equal between the male and female, you get nothing. Up here is your third force balance. This is actually on a higher plane, higher reality, beyond this world not physical. And again, this angle here would be the same as this angle here and this angle here, which constitutes the laws being perfected and balanced. Of course, the wholeness. Go ahead. Well, what are you going <laughs> to tell me what the point is? Well, it's important that you see that, that you visualize that. So, so, here, is, so here is just carnal interaction down here on the same horizontal line not going to do anything but spill out and feed nature with the energies, the riotous living. But when the, you have the two come together in consciousness and raise it up, 
this is where you get this equation here. And this is where you get the objective of this union, not to remain calm. What? Is there something behind the squares and the pentagons there as well? What do you mean, which squares? There's your dots form a square. Oh, these, I think. Those are what, these those are what, holograms, you mean? Those are your, that's your tree of what we call the tree of life. That's a star of David. That's a, that's oh, a star of David. I see some squares. Yeah, well, and then there's, and then there's going to be dots in the middle with the dots connected. Oops. Are you talking about? That one you're talking about? Right. Are you, that's the image of the. So the small yeah, there's still the other one with the, with yeah. the Star of David. Yeah, so it's kind of like sacred geometry. You're talking about, are you talking about this? That's just this the lines that connect them. The lines that connect, there's a square, then there's octagons. And, and of course I understand what well, the Star of David is. I guess someone who's into curious. sacred geometry would be able to tell you all day about that. I just want to add laws. anything to yes, the it, it does. But I don't really want to go in that in-depth into it. it at this point, because it's really not important unless you're Pythagoras or Gurdjieff or St. Francis or one of those who was really into these things. There was some discussion yesterday about you saying intellect was, should be around all the others. Okay. Yeah, this so one this, here. The, the, this, the this. drawing of it is not really... Uh, what, what that signifies is everything below, everything within has to go through, and that's the intellect. That's how you use your opportunities of life. So is that intellect is not smart like we would measure intellect. Intellect is what you do with your opportunities of life, what you do with your knowledge, how you accomplish everything. It's faith and works. Faith without works is dead. Well, everything else without the proper application is dead. And that's the sphere here. Uh, and it's, and it's this into this how you use it that gets it returned within you back to the source. And that's what makes the connection. So is that why this, th yes. this is circling this representing the intellect sphere? It's impossible the way that the Jews draw it. Because it's impossible to go from the feminine, which is right here, to what they call Ketha. It's impossible to go from the understanding. They which don't they even have the draw name. this one, though. No, they, they just, don't draw this they one. They just draw. Well, all right. They, they connect it this way. And they don't they only draw this one sometimes. So you would say that this is Keter and this is something yes, that they don't draw. That's something they don't draw, and the one below it is something that they draw once in a while. This well, is the seed of them. this is the seed of Gnosis, that knowledge. Yeah. That's not man's knowledge. Right. And these things can only become manifest in the interaction of the two columns of the tree of life. If you eat the fruit of the tree of duality, you're dead. Death means that this energy is going off into nature. It cannot return to Keta. It returns back to create a God, but only through nature, because God is all things. So yeah. the judgment that's on there is really more discernment? Yes. And the knowledge is what we refer to as gnosis? Yes. Okay. And to get to that gnosis, and that's all important sphere, that, that I think they call mm -hmm. that dat. It's the da. 11th da. Yeah. da. Whatever it is. <laughs> you know more about the language than I do. And it's the interaction of the two columns of the tree of duality. This is the tree of duality right here. The forbidden fruit of the tree of duality. Those who eat just from the male or, just or female impressions are dead. Exactly like it says in Genesis. Those who bring these two columns together, and then are able to bring the two kingdoms together, eat the fruit of the tree of life. And this is the, the impressions within your own mind. Or with that, in the merger with the opposite. Are you grasping? Because you're new to this, so. I'm not trying to test you or anything. I'm just... You're a good listener. That's good. And so Tony and I were talking about this yesterday, that, you know, that, that there are opposites to these two, that the opposite of love being hate, mm -hmm. and having to bring those into balance as well. Now, what really complicates things is that the power, the pattern of a hologram, 
which means that this same pattern exists within each sphere down to an overall number of 144,000. When you go below that, you're going into the animal kingdom in consciousness. And that each of us is born as one 144,000th in that diagram right there. And that's why we, that's what the Tower of Babel syndrome is all about, that each person sees things differently. Now when you take that across the gender divide, because women do see all reality opposite from that of the male, which is right, both of them are wrong, because both of them are the tree through the, of duality. It's only in the higher balance of the two and the, the bringing forth of those impressions where you can begin to access this higher reality. In the article on soul self, I, I use the term the morphic field that creates between a marriage or union. And that's what raises up that third force balance. This is within yourself, this is within everything, all of creation. Everything functions between the positive and negative fields. Nothing exists apart from it whether it be electrons, whether it be atoms, everything. Except for some politically correct, intellectually illiterate people don't, can't grasp the, the dynamics of creation. I think the other thing is we see it as a flat, as a linear thing, when actually there's more dimensions. Well, that's also the powers, that's what they call the Plato's cave. Mm -hmm. The outer darkness where you're, you don't understand what you're seeing. That's mm -hmm. where the Bible says that's where the weeping and gnashing of teeth will be. Mm -hmm. um, that's where uh, Gurdjieff talks about the, the world of illusions, the people running on automatic. Pythagoras would be the same way. Of course, Plato was the uh, Plato's cave. This is the reality of the far country. And it's based upon the lack of vital life force that goes off into nature that you lose. The riotous living, squandering away right on things of no meaning. And the power of the talents is putting the talent back into the earth. Even what he lost went to the other one who had more. Had more. I mean, no. it's always kept within the loop, but it's just whether you use it or lose it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And when you squander it away in the earth on riotous living, there's no growth, no development. You need that energy to expand your consciousness. It's like a turbocharge. I'm yes. Working, right? That's why I get so tired after one of these sessions, because <laughs> I enter into this higher realm, and I use up all my energy, and then I'm kaput. Yeah, and we suck up what's left, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sometimes early in the morning I'll start to write and I'll, I'll get into that higher state of mind. And But I can only go like that for so long before my biological clock clicks, right. ticks, and now I come down to earth. Yeah. That's the way it is. What does this that mean to us, that the twisting of the law, of all the laws, not only the sound, it means, let me see if I can get, it's movement. that it's going to loop. Don't need this so big anymore. Um, we had made a diagram. It's probably in the oldest stuff, uh, the Enneagram that was added later. I'm still working on this, by the way. This is a separate from all the rest of the ones that I did, except I got sidetracked. This guy's got a lot of time to write, huh? <laughs> Fast typer. Writing for a while. <laughs> well, this was, I think, Avi's. Well, this was somebody's. I added. Uh, oh, Avi's, uh, Avi's world class friend, penis. World class friend. penis, and I <laughs> added the ones who I wrote the. Uh, even the, the about the. Why they? I, I just searched now why they no back teeth between E and F. 
piano. It said because it's only actually a half step. But the way they made the scale was to make it sound more. All right, evidently I didn't put it in here. But what that does, which means that at every, between the third and fourth interval, it can be said that our works are tested. So if do, re, if do is the first note and re is reflective, mi is the sum reflect total of the, of the first two in the sequence, we see the twisting between the third and the fourth. And this is true in all of nature. But what we're doing is, unless we have the balance and wholeness, the laws are going to twist and it's going to turn back upon itself. It's going to return to the earth, makes everything earthbound, our thinking, everything. But when it returns back to the position of the dough again, it's the opposite polarity from what it was originally initiated. Which means this is why when we, this is why Gurdjieff, Pythagoras, and all those boys, when they said when you create an institution, it always turns back upon, upon its first principles. More people have been alienated from God by the church than any other force on earth. What did uh, Truman say? If you want justice in Washington, get a dog. If you want a friend in Washington, get a dog. <laughs> Something like that. The courts end up to be the injustice of the people. Lawyers. I don't have to tell you about that. <laughs> Educational <laughs> systems are meant yeah. to educate, but they do anything but educate. Down, down. Every institution that man creates turns back upon its very first principles and undermines its intended purpose. This is the law of octaves at work. This is because of the twisting. It comes around, returns back to the earth, and comes back in a different polarity. The only way to stop that from happening is through consciousness. One of the few groups that I ever saw that did not do that was the original Lebanites. Where they were, the, they were as good in the fourth century as they were in the fourth century, as the first century, but because they were made up of conscious groups and they had within themselves the consciousness groups. Um, this is why Gurdjieff correctly stated that every religion becomes corrupt within 100 years of its founding, of the death of its founder. Every religion. Because in comes the priests, in comes this and that, and they don't have the same power or the same consciousness as what was originally, and turns the octave back upon itself, and now the church <coughs> becomes exactly the opposite of what it was supposed to be. The courts become unjust. I think you could add to that, too, that the person who founded the religion has also moved on into another life and another existence and another and they're moving on but most people are not aware of that well moving not on. so much that but the person who found the religion had to struggle mm -hmm. to get that level of supreme highest spiritual vision the people who followed him tried to was taken the easy path and they without the struggle the development of mind and spirit never takes place mm -hmm. yeah and that's where you get your priests from. They have a turnkey system, kind of, yeah. that yes. they corrupt. <laughs> Thomas Paine said that Christianity was the best, or the teaching of Jesus was the best there was. But then came priestcraft. Mm -hmm. And that's what screwed everything up. And this is true not only of religion, but of everything that man creates. This is true also of a marriage between a man and a woman. Starts off really good, but the law of octaves deteriorates it really quick. Yeah. Because without the consciousness and without the building up, it is doomed to failure by the laws. So marriage is a design to end if that be if that not be if the once they're put onto the judgment, if they're not vital organisms that raise up the two. This is the law of octaves at work. So then marriages of people that stay together, they think they're happy and they're There doing are some fine. people who, who have spent lifetimes together and they are happy. But whether that marriage, there's a, the, how many marriages fail? Yeah, that's true. 
And how many marriages are superficial? Yeah. Do you think Bill and Hillary are really married? <laughs> no. Huh? No, I don't. They're as married as two homosexuals. Yeah. You know, the, all that is, is a heterosexual farce. They just have a piece of paper to commit sex. <coughs> like government licensed sex. That's nothing more. Yeah. Okay. So why not license it between whoever wants it? Men and sheep. Um, <laughs> hey, and in the wow. allegory, <laughs> the good Catholic girl better close her ears back there. This one. <laughs> yeah, but she's reacting to what flow, flows. This, this one's gonna get too much for her. Now, in the Old Testament, what is portrayed as polygamy is not multiple wives, but the multiple facets of the physical, of the reflective. So King Solomon did not have six wives and 300 in concubines, but these are, are numbers that have a meaning. Jacob didn't have four women, but these were four aspects of the evolution of the same reflective nature before and we see that the his last two children were from Rebecca which was the objective of the union and Rachel. from them were the 11th and 12th sons born the 11th you mean Rachel Rachel excuse me I like Rebecca better I'm partial to Rebecca and I always put Rebecca in there um, Now, if the first, as I explained the other day on a post, if the first is representative of the generative power, meaning when, um, when in the allegory of the Passover, when the firstborn of the Egyptians was killed, what he did was he cut off the generative power of what was holding them in bondage. And it's freed them to move onward. Um, in the case of Joseph, who was the eleventh son of Jacob, the that would be the generative power of the kingdom. There is no physical virgin birth, and actually Joseph he, was more important than Mary, because he was the gen representative of the generative power of the kingdom, which brought forth in the purity of the um, virgin, the second birth, that brought forth. The union with the logos within the second stage of birth but because they've made an institution out of the allegory nobody understands what all this means by the very mere presence of the name Joseph what's the Hebrew equivalent of Joseph yes sir. that's it but the key is that it takes both Mary and Joseph to get Jesus yes right. Mary is the the, uh, the reflective that's unspotted from this world. Yep. That's what it requires. Yep. To be in the world and not of it. And that's what brings forth that higher third force. Which is the objective. Which creates spiritual Israel within yourself. Yep. What's now, that is in, in, uh, in institutionalized like church religions and whatnot in, in Christianity, uh, because they believe that Mary was a virgin and gave birth to Jesus through this being impregnated through the Spirit, uh, many people just look at Joseph and kind of dismiss him like, well, he didn't have anything to do with he it He was ultra important in the whole equation. Of the you know, time. like he was just there. He was, you know, he decided to be and adopt this child that wasn't his kind of. And, and they, I know it's a bizarre way of looking at that whole union that's so important and they just take Joseph and like dismiss him from the equation altogether. Yes, they do. And to their own failing. Yeah. They don't understand Joseph and they don't understand that Joseph in the uh, in the life of Jacob when he wrestled with the angel. Right. Prevailed and over the laws. And don't you think that that point 
it's so important, but it's so corrupted at the same time because it gets lost in the debate. Was it God or was it Joseph? You know, is it man or is it well, God that created all, Jesus? And from it, at one level, all is of God. Yeah, it, but the key is that it's the male generative power, whether it's God or Joseph. Or you got to have the male generative power. Aside, it's the concept. But they were not talking with Joseph. We're not talking a physical generative exactly. power. Exactly. We're talking about a higher spiritual generative power, being the eleven. Right. But that whole kind of confusion and corruption actually splits religion, that very point. Isn't that an example of a twist in the octave? Yes. But it's good that Judaism and Christianity split because yeah. if, you know, each is just preserving a different form of paganism. Mm -hmm. The Jews who reject Jewish mysticism, mm -hmm. the Christians who reject spiritual Christian Gnostics, mm -hmm. the Sufis who run around trying to, the, the Muslims who try to run around killing Sufis, they're all the same. Mm -hmm. But they each kind of represent different facets, right? And that's part of the plan as well, is that they all have to... Gordano have to Bruno was burnt at the stake for saying much of what I'm saying here. Well, only because of the Constitution. Yeah, and that's... Uh, but they're undermining that like crazy right now. Right. Next, you're going to have Marxist Christianity. Mm. They're going to feed the people the opium. Keep them drugged and happy. Just like they're doing in Colorado, right. Washington State, and everywhere else. That right is yeah. a great privilege for hundreds of years, but it's probably going to deteriorate. And that's going to change the game, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What they're doing is they're creating a whole culture of young people who are in trouble mentally. <coughs> so dependent. Genetically. Yeah. yeah. But that's all due to the law of octaves when you understand it. Because of the twisting, whatever the first principles were at the founding, it reverses polarity when it comes back around, and now it's opposite. Paul said that, predicted that the, in a certain amount of time that the, uh, the church will worship, will install Satan as the head of the church and worship him. That's what they did. Are you familiar with that one? No. I know what that one is. Satan as the head of the church. <laughs> I know what that one is. I know where that, that one is. When I figured that so. had their own religion. That happened way No, that's the Catholic, Catholic religion. Something in the future. Right. And all the all the all the daughters of all of her daughters. You talk about Catholicism then? Not yes. just Catholicism, Catholic, but, but Christianity. Entire Christian yeah. church. Yeah. Yeah. What and Church of the Antichrist. There it is. Look at the writing in the sky. Let no man beguile you in any wise, for it will not be, except the falling away come first, and the man of sin will be revealed, the son of perdition. He that opposeth and exalteth himself against all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he sitteth in the temple of God, setting himself forth as God. Thus the Christ, he, he predicted that the church would worship the Antichrist, which it did. Um, the uh, Adam Clark commentary says, if you want me to make this bigger, I can. Plus. Let no man, all right, that's the first part. Quoting the An Adam Clark commentary on, except there come a falling away first, they write, we have here the original word apostia, in our word apostasy. And by this term we understand a dereliction of the essential principles of religious truth. Either a total abandonment of Christianity itself, or such a corruption of its doctrines as renders the whole system completely inefficient to salvation. But what this apostasy means is a question which has not yet, and perhaps never will, be answered to general satisfaction. What Paul said was that there will come a time where those who call themselves Christians will worship Satan, which is what they're doing. The Christ of this world, not the Christ of 
the spirit. They're worshiping a man in place of God. You didn't know that was in there? No. Yeah, learn all sorts of things here. I know. We talk about the things that the other Christians like to ignore that are in there. <laughs> Where they flip the pages real fast and go ahead and see that. Let me just find yeah. these passages that agree with you. I, I'm going to cause a negative a long time ago I'm going home, but battery charges, businesses, if they don't, if they're two positive partners, partnerships, then it won't work. That's right. Just like that. That's Everybody right. Everybody loves that way. I told Sean that a long time ago. I thought you were crazy way back then. No, yeah. <laughs> Gee, she's wiser than you thought, huh? <laughs> she used to talk to us about brain waves. I'm like, well, that's what the, 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 every parent Trans- goes to that. When, when their kids are young, they, the parents are the dumbest people there is on earth. And then as the kids get older, they all of a sudden their parents get wiser <laughs> <laughs> in the process. That's reality of life. So what we have is that because of that twisting of the octave in all the laws of all of the earth, unless you are conscious, unless you can bring those impressions together to straighten out, to go up the tree of light, then you're going to, it's going to twist and it's going to turn back itself upon in the earth. Um, we can uh, look at that. Who has all my images? Imagine that. Images for tree of life. Um, Visit web page. I like the other one better, I think. All right, well, we can use this one. And we'll blow it up. In most instances, here we have all... Why is sex, wanton sex, condemned in the scriptures? Doesn't God just want people to have more fun? Because in your mind, your body is an allegorical symbol of the mind. And all thoughts begin down here, in the gen- organs of generation, or the part of the mind that, re- that corresponds to those organs. The bo- mind surrounds the body in the etheric, and it works through the physical. So of all octaves, all thoughts, everything begins here in the bottom at the organs of generation. So we get here, do, re, and the me is either one way or the other into the tree of duality. And from here, at the twisting, it never can get into the center, it never can get up here, it goes off into nature, and that's the riotous living of the lost prodigal son. Loss of energy. That's why the, in the uh, parable of the talents, the one who put the, the talent into the earth had nothing to show when his master came back. <coughs> All right there. Now, in order to get up to the tree of, up to the center, you're going to have to, this is where the impressions are going to have to start building and overcoming the twisting of the laws. You're going to have to stop the riotous living, stop the loss of energy into nature, and begin to build and expand the mind, the conscious of the mind. And that's what Gurdjieff talked about in the impressions, which, did I use the wrong one? I used to use the wrong one, but I can do it right here. So here we see nature takes care of this, nature takes care of this, but it's these impressions that Gurdjieff says the one they'll never guess what it is. And that's the intermingling of the two 
size of the tree of duality to come up the center and not be twisted off into the earth and lose, lose the energy, the vital life force into nature. Only the merger of opposites can do that. What does the Gospel of Thomas say? One of my favorites. Since your mother hasn't seen this before, I will bring it up. Here we go. Let me make it a little bigger. One of the most crucial sayings in the Gospel of Thomas, which used to be in the Gospels, and his version, various versions exist in the other things. In fact, they're right there. The disciples said to Jesus, remember, you have to become a, as a young child to enter the kingdom. And he said, that, they said to him, shall we then as children enter the kingdom? To which Jesus replied, when you make the two one, now, you have, when you have two, you have two columns, you have the two kingdoms, you have all sorts of duality. When you make the two one, and you make the inside, that inner self, as the outside, the part you, you are in this world, and the outside of the inside, and the above like the below. The above is that king, heavenly kingdom, the below is the earthly kingdom. And when you make the male and female one and the same, so that the male not be male, nor the female female. That's what happens in the center of the, the column of the tree of life, which we should still have. Where did I put that one? Which we have there. In the tree of life. Here we have the tree of duality. Here we have the division of the above and the below. Here we have the tree of life in the center. In order to get to the center and eat, be nourished by the, through the tree of life, there's going to have to be the interaction of those outer columns of the tree of duality. And they are male and female in relationship each other, even though they're portrayed as 12 male disciples in the gospel. That's because they're active in their own right. And each one of them has within them male and female. That's what the gospel of Thomas is talking about, and that the male and the female has to be one and the same, joined. Yeah. Show the male, female, oh, column. female column. Female column. Male column. Male column. Show the heavenly the kingdom, one. the above okay. and the below, and they all have to come together in the center. Okay. So, really so this is the why you... female through the center. Hmm? Raising male and female through the center. Is that well, the male and female come together, and, and that's how you get to the so center. Is this... And then bringing that energy up then brings heaven to earth. Right. Yes, all it brings it all in. in. And this is, is where this, the yogis got it wrong, yeah. too. Is this yeah. the lifting up of the cross, too? Because you have a yes. horizontal yes. and a and vertical interaction. Yes, it, it is. And Jesus got nailed to a tree. Yes, not, well, to the tree is what it was. Yeah. Tree of life. Nailed the flesh to the tree. Go ahead, what's the question on your lips? I see it. <laughs> <laughs> You're throwing me new questions. I love that. No, I was just thinking about the part two oaks grown together. They're not as strong as they grow together. So I'm just thinking about two oaks. You know, two oaks grow together, and so I said they're better off separated. You know, be stronger. That's got nothing to do with this, I guess. Just two oaks, two trees. Now, the only way to get to the tree of life is through the interaction and the merger of the tree of duality. There's no other way. Also, like the, a lot of the Eastern philosophies say, well, we got to get above the mind. And they meditate on the, behind here is the seven spiritual centers. 
we're dealing when we deal with the tree of life we're dealing with it from the perspective of mind um, actually if you really want a, a more concise one hope I don't confuse you but here's the left hand of God and here's the right hand of God which makes 14 which you're dealing with in the, within the in the tree of life um, when it talks about the two princes um, in the uh, home homilies of uh, Clement, that there's the left hand of God and the right hand of God, and all these things are being brought together within the mind, within the tree of life. But now, the top spheres, this heavenly kingdom up here, is empowered by the top spiritual centers, which of course the Easterners call chakras. And of course, they can look at the sixth chakra and they see light and they become intoxicated by it and they say, Oh boy, I'm the Christ. <laughs> or I see God or whatever. <laughs> but they can't become the light because they lack the bottom. The only way to actually enter the kingdom is through the center. And the center requires the balance of the upper and the lower, the left and the right, and all the rest that they brought off, brought together, and made whole and raised up. And you can't do that through the way of the monk, the way of the yogi, or any kind of artificial way other than the interaction of opposites. That's the laws of creation. Do I have any other questions? Did I cover everything? Oh, you never cover everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll answer any question. I'll do, I'll do a change on that. There you go. Sean, was this one all right? Yeah. Um, I've got a question for me. How about it? So for right around for some time. I still I, have energy. I'm still uh -huh. hot there. <laughs> so right around for some time, I thought of. Uh, I, I tend to think of. Sometimes I think of intuition in, in a certain way, which is. Uh, it's almost as like accessing a past knowledge base or storehouse of information maybe and then I would think of that almost there's a, a parallel in the, in the realm of let's say just regular DNA and just genetics and stuff where you know if you like, like stuff we're taught in elementary school almost where this is how genes are passed on and you look the feminine side retains traits until they've gone through two or three generations they still they can, they, they can, they can track the feminine side all the way back to who knows where same as they can track the masculine side, genetically. Well, so I look at this, and I, I, I see like there's some kind of connection there. So I look at logic and intuition, so I think, well, intuition is perhaps drawn upon the past or something like that in some ways. Yes, it is. And then logic is, draw, is, is vision of the future. Okay. Okay, and that's, that's what I was getting towards. But they have to be brought together. Yeah, and then there's almost like an iterative That's why women have greater insight into things like past lives and things like that and and why most of the psychics and mediums are all women there are some men um, but m the most of the women have much better insight but since few men listen to it because it doesn't fit their linear scheme of things that just women talk yeah like cosmo sits and goes yak 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 when blowing <laughs> he, cosmo teases them when they sit there and they and they talk at night and right, Beth? Yes, but we have a theory that someone actually taught him that. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs at them. He says, "Yak, yak, 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 yak." Yeah, we're not doing that yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to get him to fess up. Cosmo is the cockatoo <laughs> parrot. So, and he he'll he'll laugh at them while they're talking and say, "Yak, yak, yak, yak." yak. <laughs> and as far as I know, Cosmo is a male, so it's probably that linear thinking in his head that causes him to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Most of what women feel and see does not fit into the male spectrum of things. So they just ignore it or pacify or whatever. But it's that importance, that interaction that's, that will evolve the mind and open the mind and grow the mind. That's not to say that women have the answers either, because they don't. Right. <laughs> the new age mostly is for about as lost as you can get because it's mostly all feminine thought. Even the castrated males that are in there. Transmitters and receivers. It's, uh, have, have stronger piece of transmitters and receivers. 
Electrons, ones. But it's the interaction of the two opposites on all levels of our being. Which means that from the, which means this down here, this intuition not only has to interact with this logic, but then you have other trinities in other ways. This wisdom has to interact on this side with the logic, which gives birth to this. This understanding, this evolved male linear understanding has to interact with this, and it has to interact across this spectrum. This is what the process of becoming old. And it has to do while retaining its original vision. So there is no right and wrong, it's just each piece has to take the place in the greater puzzle. Not this one's right, this one's wrong. Each is important, and that's where they get it wrong. Um, anytime you censor, like my post you saw me suggest to J.J. Dewey this morning, those who read it, that this is why I run an unmoderated forum. As long as the people behave themselves, they're willing to tell me I don't know what I'm doing and I'm stupid and everything else, which they do all the time. In a moderated forum, you never even know what the people post because it doesn't even get through into the forum. They post fluff. Huh? They post yeah. the fluff. Yeah, they do. But that's what all religious groups are. All philosophical groups, all these, these they're, they're all have moderators. The only moderation we use in our group is new members, because we occasionally get people to come there to curse at us, to say nasty things. So they usually get dumped. I usually don't dump that, just usually take away their ability to post. But the interaction of opposites has to take place at each level in order to raise up to the level. Pete, you got thoughts. I, I see it just there. You have a breakthrough. Um, give me a moment. <laughs> are you familiar with Gurdjieff that he said they'll never guess what the impression foods are? Well, I did. I never studied that much about Gurdjieff. I, mean, I know I he's, he's difficult. I, I, I got introduced when I came, first came here to the forum, and y'all were talking about Gurdjieff. I, mean, it well, was I use Gurdjieff, so I don't have to go into that stuff. You know, I don't want to get down to that nitty-gritty of mathematics and this frequency and that. So, you know, use Gurdjieff as a foundation, then we'll talk about what you get out of it. And I'm not sure I like all of Gurdjieff. I, I, I like what Ospensky wrote in, in Search of the Miraculous. That was pretty straightforward and the concepts was pretty good. I think the trouble with him is, and it's probably just a function of the time period also, but it seems like he wrote everything too cryptic to me. He did. So. But these are cryptic time, you know, this whole thing. Yeah. Pythagoras wouldn't, had only had a core group of close followers, and the rest would just got the bullshit. This is true of all groups. Yeah. <coughs> because they couldn't have handled the real... It's not they couldn't have, they couldn't comprehend it. Yeah, well that's... Because they were squandering they away. couldn't handle it because they couldn't comprehend it. Instead of channeling it within and deepening and expanding the mind, mm -hmm. they were spreading their seed outwardly. Right. Any more questions, Beth? I have a question. What? Could you kind of compare the difference between wholeness and completeness? Because those are words that people use interchangeably, but they have very distinct differences, right? Completeness can be thought of maybe as a, well, complete is, they, they, they're interchangeable to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. But to me, wholeness is of a higher order. Completeness can be, well, you got the basic parts there and there. there the building blocks are there, they're just not all totally evolved into the final thing. Wholeness to me is where it's a complete interacting and at a higher order of things. Mm -hmm. And there's wholeness and completeness kind of at each level, Yes. right? And then yes. they build on each other and then ulti the ultimate wholeness. But what's bad also is that the, each one of these spheres have to themselves be whole and complete. Exactly. I think that's kind of what... Which means that this one over here, the intuition, 
doesn't have to think like this logic. In fact, if it does, it's it's, 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 it's totally right. failed. Yeah. yeah. It's what the the books Venomous. create no surrogate men. Yep. And you know they lose they totally lose their intuitive perspective of things. Mm -hmm. And that's their power. That's who they are. Right. Without that intuitive perspective. Mm -hmm. So the two dead ends are if you just say solely male or solely female, right? That's the, the, the tree of duality. It or brings death. if you try to instead of merging them and raising them up, you just try to co-mingle them like that's false. That, that's a boo-boo too, that's, right? Those that's political correct falseness, a yeah. plastic culture. Yeah. <coughs> the big boo-boos. So you didn't take offense that sex and procreation is only an allegory, did you? <laughs> I mean, to the, to the church, there is no other reason for such a thing. Right. Well, that's how you get more uh, money in the yeah, offer, the, right? The, the more church you have to go, go to the Catholic. Well, when you I were say probably this is the Catholic, more donors. Right? Right? You were probably <laughs> not privy to yesterday's conversation where the church has had to change their stance on divorced women because all the women became divorced. Yeah. That actually caused a lot of arguments. So they could the no church. longer empty out the pews mm -hmm. because then they'd go broke. Mm -hmm. I know some people that were some divorced women that you know were, they were beat and everything, and they were trying to get out of the marriage for their children is dangerous, and people just shun them, you know, yeah. they, you know, like they were bad people because of the teaching and. It would yeah, but the law of octaves causes some unions to fail. Mm -hmm. So, since the law of God, octaves is actually the law of God, a, a, a union that is not productive in the proper way is bound to failure. Destined. And sometimes that's in the life script, is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. For a reason. There's a reason why that one has to fail. Right. Yeah. Probably Sean had to learn certain lessons with his first wife before he could get to his second. Man, I'm hard one. Maybe now that you've learned, now you're prepared to go for more positively. This happens a lot. But that's would you were yours, right? mother, would you agree? <laughs> yes? Hit the nail on the head? But the good news is that you're on the other side of that mountain, right? You get the, the bad stuff done first, and then you get to get Hopefully you stuff. won't continue to make the same mistakes. Right. Some people never learn. Right. That's the twist. Robert, you got... Uh... Oh, it reminds me that I had questions about the Enneagram and had an opportunity to ask you about it. I'm not a authority on an Enneagram. I, I understand it philosophically, you know, philosophically and I can point it out, but I've never, I much more prefer the Tree of Life and the Star of David. Right. To, me right. that, to me that explains it all. Yeah. Is that something you would recommend? If I was a mathematician, then maybe I'd like the Enneagram better, but I'm not. Was that something you'd recommend I look into further? If you have a desire to do so, then follow your desires and see what what comes of it. But, um, I mean, I, I follow the music one to the Lord of Octaves. Yeah, to ridiculous. Where I, I I came to a YouTube video of a guy that had created a Pythagorean piano to demonstrate. You can buy. Uh, Music yeah. things, by yeah, and, it, and it's I forget how many keys it had on it, but he, he he explained going up if you followed the absolute balance of the vibrations where that would take you, like the ratio and all that. Yeah, the ratios. If you just follow yeah. the ratios where that would take you and how that takes you beyond, you get, end up somewhere between the E and the F. In other words, you end up in the, in the ghost zone. So then, then he said, well, within. And then he, then he demonstrated, like, well, within, from do to re, how many different ratios you could come up with that. And then he started demonstrating these scales that ended up with quarter tones or eighth tones. And he says, then your ear gets adjusted to that, and then when you go back, then, it, then everything begins to sound foreign, you know. And, mm -hmm. it, and you can do all that, you know, according to this fool that Avi talked to that, you know, that is going to fit <laughs> And then this guy created, and there is a keyboard like that. But the thing is, is it's well, not only a fool would accept that yeah. explanation. It's, <laughs> but it's impractical. It's fun to study and to look at and stuff. And I, and I, but, but at the same time, it's like, 
Because the guy was demonstrating, he was playing some stuff that he created, but he says, after a while, your ear just starts to kind of, it gets kind of wiggy in there. But you can't do it on a guitar because you've got the frets. Yes, but, but you can do on it a on, a violin. on a violin. Yes, because it doesn't have the frets. Just by adjusting your, and even more so on a cello. And they bass. do that too. They yeah. They make those weaving sounds on a violin. Yeah. That's why a violin player, a, a young violin player, sounds so awful because the fingers are never in the right place. Yeah. Well, and you can so do they it build up that. That and, sense and I've heard it demonstrated on a clarinet too, where somebody could use alternate fingerings to create quarter tones. Like, I things. can. The only one I've seen that can whistle, first off, is my African gray bird. I can whistle mm -hmm. to him, and he'll imitate my exact tones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I whistle to him all the time, and he whistles back to me. But I mean, that's that's what he I did. Both just, of us are real small. Yeah, talented. I just wanted to look at that after that. Thing that you know, came through last year, I just took a look at that and I was like, you know. But then every one of these things in the tree of life do the same thing. You start on, you go to logic, there's a do re mi to that, there's intuition, a do re mi to that. Da, 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 da. You got and it. And twist and twist and that's twist and twist. The, that's the complexity of a hologram. Well, that's what I kept seeing when this guy was doing the piano. I just kept seeing, well, there's all the start points of the tree of life. And you understand that someone who's polarized to a sphere in the logic, everything seems logical. Mm -hmm. And everything is from that perspective. Well, it's like where I feel like we're That's why atheists and deists, deists say, oh, I can look at the universe and see the signature of God. And an atheist says, you're crazy. All I see is there's no God that made that. Well, that's like I feel where science is right now. It's gone to this, you can't, it's not science unless you can this person and that that's person. That's changed, you know. In modern physics. In modern physics, yes. But where, si where the other science has gone, the pseudoscience has gone, is to this... I mean, the stuff they teach in school. Yeah. And continue to make you do in institutions. Mm -hmm. You're going to write, you have to have a lit review, it has to be based off these things, and if you, if you have an intuitive moment, you get looked down upon. You know, where, where are you quoting that? Well, that's why women are not allowed to be women. Yeah. And, uh, Unless they repeat well, what men tell them. That, that's true of any kind of group mentality, though, right? Yeah. So anytime you get a, a group together, they'll think of. There's the orthodox way, and thinking, and then there's yeah. the heretic. That way of thinking. Is and I kept thinking, about, well, here's the difference between Nikola Tesla and, and Edison, you know, and, and uh, uh, what Einstein talked about, you know, that half of what he came up with was intuitive creation. Einstein appreciated the intuitive. Yeah, and and then imagination we, is more important than knowledge. And what I think is ironic is I'll see Einstein in that quote up there on the wall in a lot of schools, and I just walk by and I chuckle. <laughs> and then you you have it up here like a poster child of something that you don't. Paying practice. lip service. To yeah, it. paying lip service to Einstein, but not following. Well, Darwin him. said that his own theory was a fraud. Yeah, and that if his theory was right, that you'd see. Nature be filled of the links. Mm -hmm. The fact that you don't means that they don't exist. That something else caused them to be that way. You know, and I've argued with people about that. About <coughs> what, show me the links, and they'll show me something. I said that's been debunked. And they said, "Where's the debunk?" And I said, "Well, look it up. Why do I have to do all the work for you?" But it's been debunked. You want that, you know? And I showed them where Lucy was debunked. Any more questions? Sean? I Sean's have, mother? I had one, but it got lost. She has fresh insight. Yeah, where did it go? No question. <laughs> she may stop reading my writings. I want to ask about you have another question. Do you have a question? Or should I ask mine? I want to ask about the tree of life. So if you take logic and intuition, the next the in the center column that it's love. So if the you can't reach that center column without the interaction of two. And it's very difficult to reach that center without also the top. Let me tell you another secret about the octave. When you pluck the beginning note going up the scale, in another dimension it's also plucking the opposite and working down, and they meet in the middle. 
but you just don't hear it because the limitations you hear. And also, that's the twisting of the interactive of the top and the bottom. It also helps spread, become earthbound, unless they can pass that test. Let's, let's run through that one again. <laughs> I just want to say with the center column, it is, you know, you have in, you know, logic and intuition, and then the center column for the next one is love. I was thinking, wondering if that, with the union of the, the two columns, uh, does that you know, union of uh, intuition and, and logic does that be become love and the intuition well, of judgment and mercy become gnosis? It can, but it needs in order to get to the center, you need other factors involved, and that's why I said, do we hear harmonics? Yeah. What is a harmonic? It's uh, we have two frequencies that are. Compatible, basically. Should the same there multiple? When you so. strike a note and it's a middle C, yeah, right. on another dimension, another and there's another C. There's yeah. another C that's and also striking a, and working in reverse. But it's also it's working in reverse. Yeah, and, and, and keep that thought alive. I'll be right back. All and right. It, as it builds up, they get they get more overlapping, closer. But you're right. They're not the but then you can but your ears flip it, but your, your ears, ears are not hear capable of hearing the the, the harmonic also it can be sensed but your ears your your carnal ears are not accustomed to hearing that i, I knew what i forgot this time i have an instrument where you sing it you can hear the harmonic it's called a sitar no i've got another it's a bell is it? Click it, you can hear. Well, sitar, what yeah. the Indians use. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. When you sitar, pluck you the main hear. string, it plucks the bottom string yeah. from the vibration. Oh. And what you're doing is you're, when you, because when you, the law is, are you ready for this? <laughs> Any movement in one direction initiates an opposite response. And that also comes into here. So if you take a positive step here, you only see the positive step, but you also initiated this reflective negative response that's going to come around in the lower of octaves. All things contain the opposite. If it did not contain the opposite, it could not exist. What's the full volume sign for every action there's an equal? Reaction. Yes. Yeah. You're missing this part of the conversation. What are you showing me? All right. I, I, Go ahead. It says like you cannot create or destroy energy because whenever you energy flows, there's also there's a positive and a negative. Yeah, well. that's a big tablet, isn't yeah. it? That's the same as size as mine. Yeah. All right, so where's what's your guitar? Watch out! There. Come over here and look. Let's show you something real quick. We can hold it up to the camera. Sure. Oh, the guitar you want? You want me to hold it up to the? No, no, I can. I'll zoom. See if I can zoom out. I'll hold this up. It's heavy. <laughs> May I see that? Watch, watch where it catches it. I'll try to identify the note. This is a tune. Do you see how it's jump, all these other ones are spiking along the way? Mm -hmm. This is the frequency. Going this way. You see how they're spiking? Yeah. Those are the harmonics up there. But they, the, mm -hmm. uh, the amplitude decreases. Yeah. As you do. But you also have the opposites down here. Yeah. Alright, so this is showing frequency. I mean, you're not going to have opposite frequency, but this is showing. As you go this way, this is increasing in frequency. So, like, this would be, say, 100 hertz, this would be 200, 300, and so forth. Mm -hmm. It's, it's logarithmic. So it's exactly, yeah. Should we point the iPad toward the camera? Are we still recording? And you'll yeah, see. Still recording. What's interesting what is some, yeah. watch the tuner. Sometimes it'll pick that note. Watch that little, this little white arrow up here. Mm -hmm. That's where it's identifying the note. See, I'm skipping around a little bit because it's not sure which one is which. It'll catch a G down here, and then it thinks it's up here sometimes. Did you okay. see that? Now let me turn this to the camera. Yep. And do it. I'll zoom in on the. All right. So the note in the middle and the harmonics, the higher harmonics of the same note. Yeah. 
to go? Yep. Uh, all right. Now turn it to And since each action initiates its, its opposite, and dimensionally, also that opposite polarity, only a person of a higher consciousness can perceive this. Remember the second part of that statement where it says, um, you have to make the two one, you have to put an eye in the place of an eye and mm -hmm. put, this is all the, the added mm -hmm. senses that is required. Having eyes to see and ears to hear. It's that too. That was a different saying though, but that's fine. Right, but it's essentially the same topic. Yes, it topic. is. <laughs> now because those who only see with the physical don't have the eyes to see, the ears to hear, or the mind to perceive, they stay earthbound. You find it again. I, I can remember it's the letter of Philip or the, or the gospel, not the gospel. Gospel. The of act Philip. of Philip or the act of acts of Andrew, one or the other, has that Thomas quote in there as well. Um, it's also found in the letter of Clement. I haven't seen the one in the Acts of Philip. You want to send it to me? I'll send, send it to you. Me. It's either Philip or I have to go back home and look at which one. Because I'll add it to my list then. Because that's when, when I was reading through it and I saw it, it's like, no, yes. If you got parallel <laughs> ones, I'll, I'll add it to the thing. If you got it, send it to me. All right, is that it? Are we done with questions? or? Um, no, I got another one. All right, so... We, you talked about it earlier. Okay, so the initiation, because we start coming with a lot of losses. So you have step one, right? And that's when, let's just hypothetical. You set out to do something, whatever it may be. I'm going to go pick something random. I'm going to go build a barn, right? Step two, some sort of reflective something or another. And so, in my mind, right or wrong, I tend to think of that as something could happen to maybe prevent that activity. So you go out to build your barn and a storm shows up or whatever. You know, just thinking of, of things where you need to go buy nails or you need to go, you know, this or that. Well, also don't forget that everything you build will deteriorate. Okay. It'll turn back to the earth because that's the Lord. It'll, you know, come full circle, dust to dust, so on. So as soon as you start building something, the laws of the earth will start its deterioration. Okay, so that's it's almost like... Uh, you could kind of tie that into what we call thermodynamics and what a bit. What did that great philo American philosopher Bob Dylan say? He was not busy being born, he was busy dying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, when, you, when you're born, you're, you start aging. And you also start dying. That's right. Well, the process of, birth, of death starts Opposite. when you come out the womb. Finish your barn? Well, I think something might have interrupted. That action. Well, since you started the barn thing, this is kind of a funny story. Um, <laughs> when I was up in Wisconsin, these Amish are trying to build a barn. Yeah. Amish are very good. Don't use the word trying. Well, no, you have <laughs> to know. Yeah, let, I mean, let me finish the story. Got very so good they start the building the barn. Let's not pick on the Amish. <laughs> they start building the barn, and then all of a sudden, it, it went. Okay, and it collapsed over on itself. So then, a couple of days later, they put it back. They don't change anything in the architecture, <laughs> they just put it back. Okay, they start building it again, they don't change anything, and all of a sudden they start adding siding on it, and the wind hits the siding like a, like a sail. Boom, it falls the other direction. <laughs> so then, what do they do? They pick it back up, and they start over, and they don't change anything inside. They start putting more siding on another stuff, and I drove, yeah. and, it, and now the, the thing is, is I'm going to have to call up there and find out, is the barn still there? Is the barn <laughs> still there? What's holding this again? Because there was like, there was a fun foundational flaw in that particular law, you know, whatever it was, but it kept... You know. yeah, this is not speaking against all Amish everywhere. No, 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 no. <laughs> just no. This, this little one's there. I mean, maybe, you know, but it just, it just struck me about your story. When I asked about the Amish, I said, is the enlightened people in the core of the Amish? The answer always came back was, he who lives his religious beliefs finds the truth. Is it 
No matter what the starting point. You notice in this form, we don't ask anybody to convert to anything. Mm -hmm. Don't ask anybody to take any pledges. However you come, well, that's your starting point. Now we'll help you find your way based upon that starting point. There was a Chinese one saying that sincerity will bring brilliant success. Which is the same thing. And action. The action is the important. No, like if you uh, went and tried to join Shemaya Phillips Ebonite form, if that's what you want to call it, first you got to take an oath that you uh, agree with this and that and everything else. You hate Christians and you hate Alan Franchor and whatnot. And only that helps you in. <laughs> right? Well, well that's yeah. a great founding principle right there. Yeah. yeah. I hate, I hate, I hate. Uh, you, you know, you know you've done a job when you're a highlight of someone else's religion. <laughs> 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 I'm thorns on their sides. <laughs> yeah, I went and looked at the Mason thing at one point, probably about probably five, six years ago, and they had the in the sign-up paperwork. They had that you had to uh, like honor the the worshipful master or something like that, what they called it. And it just I don't know, it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way, just the way it was worded and, and that type of thing. It was still a tough thing. Has anybody here been asked to convert to anything? Uh, Change anything? Just let's expose you to things that they don't tell you. And then that'll transform yeah. yourself. Always works. Become a Catholic? Fine. A Jew? Fine. The Muslims get a little hairy. I've been threatened by them. Any other questions or points? Amos? I was only going to ask you about the, we were talking, you were talking about the labeling, like knowledge, and gnosis, and, and that kind of thing. Is there a better way to label the tree of life? I guess. That's know. the labels they gave me. I didn't ask for the tree of life, they gave it to me, force fed it to me. I didn't ask for the knowledge of the seven libraries of scripture. I had no idea of it at that part, because you have to go back and visit that episode, and they were afraid that I wouldn't go back and visit that episode, so they forced it upon me. Other things have done, they did that too. They force-fed certain essential knowledge that I would need later on. And the Tree of Life was one of them, because I didn't, didn't know anything about the Tree of Life when I started looking and everything else, and they also wanted to make sure that I didn't make the mistake of drawing it with ten spheres. Because mm. that's a dead end. And they, in spirit, they drew that that way and they labeled it that way. Alright. <laughs> so, register your complaints. Not at all. It could knowledge be looked as, you know... And they also explained... They also explained in depth what they meant by intellect. And it wasn't intellect like a lot of people would think intellect. The intellect can only be measured by how you use what you know. So, like uh, in our barn, one's a, a theory we've read about in a book somewhere about this is how you put up your barn. And then the wind comes and blows and maybe that theory doesn't stand up. Thing. Proof is in the pudding. Yeah. It's the result. Final result. Now I we give you all this knowledge. What you do with that knowledge, that's the intellect. If you keep doing the same dumb thing over and over again and expecting the same results, then you're not using your intellect. Isn't that Einstein's definition of insanity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I read that somewhere once. A lot of insane people. Oh, yeah. They're just kind of following a loop, very mechanical, aren't they? Yeah, like, uh, it's is, so that, easy is, to your, is, your, is your rodents up Congress. there running on a yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
I hear them when I'm down. They're not rodents, they're marsupials. Whatever they, I can't pronounce the words, so whatever they are, I hear them this, like a machine running up there. That's yeah. the, them running Call on this, like a, like a hamster runs or whatever yeah. on, on the thing. On the wheel, thinking yeah. he's getting somewhere. Well, well that's, yeah, what, pe that's what people spot. do. Mm. They keep yeah. running on that wheel. And look at the donkey going around. It's that's the same true. pattern with just superficial differences That's why Gertrude on the play portrayed them as running on autopilot. And they're very busy. I mean, they're putting a lot of energy into it, but it's just going it, nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, they got <clears throat> vital life force. They're casting it to the earth like that. Yeah. And they're enjoying themselves in the process. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very much. So. Riotous living can be fun. Is that it? We're done. You can shut the camera off, or? Oh yeah. Everyone's hungry. Get one of those balls for them. Thank yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will, <laughs> they do have a little um, car that you can Those put them in and then they, they go across the Oh yeah, and then they run and they drive the ball yeah, all yes, over the yeah. house. Yeah. <laughs> At least they're getting somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing with that is There's no that they're only up it, late at night, so, you know, I'd have to stay up. That would be a good idea. Yeah. Hook a broom or a vacuum cleaner to them. And <laughs> the a manual washer. rumba or whatever that is called. Yeah. <laughs> At um, least it's getting some work done, right? I'm going to show, we're going to show you the floor shot for you later. Is, uh, <laughs> is, 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 is